how when you're developing a new feature, uh, you can log some information to Advantage Scope to help you test that feature um, even without a robot. Um, and this builds on the simulation features that I that I showed last time. Um, so I was trying to think of a, a feature um, that might work well for this demonstration. Um, and I thought back to a feature that we tried to implement in the 2022 season, um, but uh, ran out of time and weren't able to do so. And that is the evasive turn. Um, the idea that when the robot's traveling in a given direction <coughs> um, upon a button press um, and then rotating the robot, kind of like a spin move, um, it would change the uh, axis of rotation, um, not so much the axis, but the location of the rotation um, to, to pivot around a uh, defensive robot. Um, and this is something we, we had coded up and we tested a little bit on the carpet and it wasn't quite working right and we had more important things we needed to do. Um, and so this is actually a really good example because this is a, a nice to have feature, um, but not a feature that we could justify taking up lots of robot time in the carpet to develop and debug. So if we can develop and debug it in simulation, um, then uh, that could be a really neat feature for, for the future. Um, so um, I threw something together um, as an example for that. And what I primarily want to focus on is how we can add code to log additional information for the purpose of testing a feature, even if it's just temporary, might add it and then delete it. Um, so let's take a look at, at all of that. Um, so let's look at the feature first. So um, I guess this will be a helpful little review of like how we can add like a new feature as well. So if I go to robot container, I'm inside the configure button bindings method here. And so um, I added on button one of joystick one. So that's the joystick we use for rotation. When that button is pressed, it's going to run the sequential command group. Um, it's going to um, invoke the set evasive turn center method, um, which will calculate and change the what we call the center of gravity um, of the robot, and that's what's used for the rotation. Um, it will then wait a certain amount of time, um, and I'll show you where that constant's defined in a moment, um, and then it will reset the center of gravity back to the origin of the robot. Um, and so that's how that command is is defined with. So there's a uh, reset center gravity was a method that already existed, but I did add this set evasive turn center. Um, the two constants involved here, um, which we can certainly tweak, and we can even make tunable numbers if we wanted to, if we wanted to adjust and tune um, on the fly. We have the evasive turn radius in meters, so I, I did a, a one meter radius. Um, I figured that was about the distance from the center of our robot to the center of the defensive robot, and so that was a good thing to rotate around. Um, and then how long this uh, this evasive maneuver lasts, and I did 1.3 seconds, um, simply based empirically on, on looking at it in the simulation, and we could adjust that as well. Um, so the new method we added is uh, set evasive turn center of gravity here. Um, and so the, the, the approach I took here, um, the calculation is to leverage some of the uh, 2D geometry classes available in WPI lib. And so um, what I'm really interested in is the, 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 the chassis speed velocity vector. Um, so chassis speeds are robot relative. Um, and so I built a new translation 2D object based off the components of the chassis speed's velocity. Um, I don't actually care what the velocity is, I only care about its direction. So I build a new translation to the object based on that and I get its angle. Um, and I use that angle to build a, a new translation 2D, which is not a velocity vector, but rather um, a position one, a displacement I should say. Um, and that has a, uh, a, a length of evasive turn radius meters, um, that's that one meter thing, and the angle that matches the, the velocity. Um, this will basically, in the direction of travel, um, set the rotation, set the point of rotation a meter from the center of, of our robot. Um, and so I set that to the center of, of gravity. And, and there's already code in the drive tearing class, I'll show you here. Um, 
that when we calculate the sort of module states um, from the kinematics object, we do pass in the center of gravity already. Um, and so none of that code needs, needs to change actually, it's just changing the center of gravity uh, temporarily. So that's all that we're doing, we're doing there. Um, and then there's still the uh, reset center of gravity hasn't changed, we still set it back to, to zero. Um, but what's needed here in terms of testing this in simulation is to be able to visualize where that center of gravity is um, and to log that in some way. And sometimes we just want to log numbers, um, and that's fine. And sometimes we, uh, we can plot those, we can put them in a table, in the vanish scope, whatever we want. But other times it's helpful to log um, things that will show up in terms of the odometry um, or in the, uh, the 3D field view as well. So this is the periodic method. This is where um, a bunch of things are done um, related to logging. Um, and so I'm going to add some code here at the end to both log um, for the odometry tab to log where the new center of gravity is, um, as well as to do that for the um, 3D field one. So I'm going to do logger.get instance. Um, and let's see, we'll do record output. Oh. Sometimes copilot is helpful and sometimes it's not. Um, and I want to do odometry. I'm going to call this COG, center of gravity. Um, so I'm going to put it under the odometry category there. Um, and then I can't just log the center of gravity. So um, advantage kit takes a variety of different values, but basically I want like pose 2Ds or pose 3Ds. So we already have a pose 2D for where the robot is. That's the pose estimator pose. So I'm gonna use that. And I'm gonna add to that pose um, a transformation. So I'll do a new transform 2D. And that transformation will, um, have the displacement of the center of gravity, um, and then I don't need an actual rotation, so I'll just complete that. Cool. Um, so that takes care of the odometry, and then I'll do a similar thing here. Logger, get instance, record output. And this one I'll put in the 3D field. And inside the 3D field field, I'll put center gravity. This way in the 3D field, we can see a, a representation of this. Now I have to do a new pose 3D. And again, I'll take the pose estimator pose. Um, and I will add to it uh, the same thing. So. All right, so let me get all my parentheses lined up here. A couple more there, there we go. Cool, this looks pretty good. All right, so let's run this in the simulator. All right, I'm gonna keep my simulator on a different screen um, since you've all already seen that. Um, and that way we can focus on advantage scope here. Um, I think I'm already connected. So I'm gonna, we'll look at the odometry stuff first. I'm gonna move the robot um, up to the center of the field here. All right, and so I've got the robot here in terms of a pose. So we need to look under the odometry thing and let's add the center of gravity as well. So I'm gonna drag that into poses here and I'm gonna make that a ghost. Um, so basically it will show up like another robot um, that we're running along. So let's, let's give this a shot. So I'm gonna run across the field and as I do so, I'm going to press the button um, to do the swerve to do the evasive swerve. And then I also need to press the button though to uh, turn on field relative at least. Okay, there we go. Actually, let's uh, rotate the robot a little bit, make this more interesting. So even if I'm facing this way, as I go across the field, the feature should work. All right, so let's give this a shot. That's pretty cool. All right, let's go back the other way. 
Um, make sure I get all the right buttons right. All right, here we go. And that time I kept turning so you could see like how the uh, rotation changed back. So that looks pretty cool. Let's look at that on the 3D field because the 3D field is pretty neat. Um, so here's the 3D field. Um, oh, we've imported our robot model just because it's cool. Um, so let's pull in the other robot, which we can do as like a ghost. Readjust this field a little bit so we can see it. All right, let's try this. Try to get the right buttons. There we go. There you go, that's the rotation around. And then back the other way. Very cool. So, um, and then once we're happy with this, um, we don't necessarily need this information anymore. I can delete this logging information here um, because I don't need to commit that um, to the new feature. It was just helpful for, for debugging. Um, and there'll certainly be some consideration for us to make in terms of what do we want to log in permanently and, and what we don't. Um, but for, for this purpose, I don't think we need that. So we'll get rid of it. All right, I hope that was helpful.